Welcome to the EP15 A3 tutorial. In this tutorial, you will learn how to use Analyze It to verify that a measurement procedure meets performance requirements. You should use this analysis before introducing a new measurement procedure into the laboratory, after maintenance to the measuring system, or upon failing a proficiency test or inspection. This tutorial follows the CLSI EP15A3 protocol to verify the precision against the manufacturer's claim and estimate the bias using proficiency testing materials. The EP15A3 example worksheet shows three columns. The sample column identifies the concentration or level of analyte in each sample. Run identifies the day number of each run. Ferritin identifies the measured value for three replicates of sample in each run. We recommend you use the example worksheets included with Analyze It as templates for your own analysis. Estimating precision. To estimate the precision of the measurement procedure, click a cell in the dataset. On the Analyze It ribbon tab in the Statistical Analysis group, click Precision and then click One Factor. The Analysis task pane opens on the right. In the Y drop-down list, select Ferritin. In the Factor A drop-down list, select Run. In the By drop-down list, select Sample. Then clear the Detailed Components checkbox. On the Analyze It ribbon tab, in the MSA group, click Variability Plot and also click Identify Outliers. So after all that, we can just click Calculate and the analysis report opens. Now, let's look at the results. The Variability Plots shows a simple visual assessment of the closeness of agreement between the measured values. The spread of each individual points represents the variation within each run. The purple lines show the mean of each run, the spread representing the variation between runs. The blue line shows the overall grand mean. You should observe the scatter of the points to ensure there are no obvious problems. If a result appears spurious, then you should investigate and correct any mistakes. If the data appears to be unusable, stop the evaluation and begin an expanded evaluation of the sources of measurement error, or contact the manufacturer. We note that one observation in Sample 1, Run 1, is highlighted in red as a potential outlier, but do not know the reason for the aberrant result. We will continue with this observation included in the analysis and return to it later in the tutorial. The abbreviated variance components table shows precision expressed numerically as the standard deviation, SD, and coefficient of variation, CV. Testing precision against a performance claim. You should perform this step when you already have a performance claim from a manufacturer's package insert and want to test whether your precision estimate is significantly greater than the claim. It is possible for the imprecision from a study to be greater than the manufacturer's claim simply due to chance. This procedure ensures that the manufacturer's claims are only falsely rejected 5% of the time when they are in fact true. To test the precision against a manufacturer's performance claim, in the Analyze It ribbon tab in the Precision group, click Test Claim. Now, in the Hypothesis grid, Type the performance claims as an absolute value or as a relative value. For example, type 5 for an SD of 5 mg per litre or type 5% for a CV of 5%. In the Significance Level edit box, type 5% and then select the Family Wise Error Rate checkbox. CLSI EP15 uses a Family Wise Significance Level so the overall significance level is a maximum of 5% regardless of the number of levels tested. That's it. Just click Recalculate. Then the analysis report updates. 
The detailed variance components table shows the observed and expected SD or CV along with the hypothesis test p-value for each level. All the hypothesis tests except one are not significant and highlighted green. The one significant test is highlighted in red. You should contact the manufacturer for assistance in diagnosing the problem when you fail to meet their product claims. If the hypothesis test is not statistically significant, but the imprecision estimate is much larger than the claim, you may want to repeat the study with more data to be able to detect smaller departures from the claim. Dealing with outliers and assessing their impact. Even after correcting or excluding all results known to be spurious, there may sometimes be results marked as statistical outliers. This may be due to a non-performance related cause, which, if known, would have justified excluding the result. Alternatively, the apparently extreme results may genuinely represent the performance. There is always a trade-off between retaining the result, which will inflate the precision estimates, or excluding it, which may give overly optimistic estimates. It is often good practice to calculate the results before and after excluding the outlier to assess their impact. To create a new analysis excluding possible outliers, in the Analyze It ribbon tab in the Report group, click Clone. With this done, the dataset worksheet activates and the analysis task pane remains open. On the Descriptives panel, select the Exclude Identified Outliers checkbox. Click Calculate and a new analysis report opens. The variability plot shows the excluded outlier as a red cross. The detailed variance components table shows the observed and expected SD or CV along with the hypothesis test p-value for each level. All the hypothesis tests are not significant and highlighted green. Because the exclusion of the outlier changes the outcome of the study, it is essential to investigate further to try and determine its cause or contact the manufacturer for further assistance in diagnosing the problem. Estimating bias using reference or proficiency testing materials. You should perform this step when you already have a sample with a known assigned value and you want to estimate the bias and test whether it is significantly different to zero. It is possible for the bias from a study to be greater than zero simply due to chance. This procedure ensures the assumption that the bias is zero is only falsely rejected 5% of the time when it is in fact true. To estimate the bias of the measurement procedure, go to the Analyze It ribbon tab and in the MSA group, click Test Equality. The trueness panel opens. Now, in the Assigned Values grid, in the Values column, type the known values of the materials. Note that CLSI EP15A3 only gives the assigned value for sample 2. We have fabricated values for the other samples for demonstration purposes. Select the uncertainty in assigned values checkbox and then in the assigned values grid type the SE and the DF. The standard error SE of the assigned value depends on the source of the assigned value. Reference materials usually are accompanied by a standard uncertainty, whereas proficiency testing materials usually specify the SD and number of laboratories. The standard error, SE, and degrees of freedom, DF, should be computed using the formula in the CLSI document. In the significance level edit box, type 5% and select the family-wise error rate checkbox. CLSI EP15A3 uses a family-wise significance level. So the overall significance level is a maximum of 5% regardless of the number of levels tested. Click Recalculate and the analysis report updates. The table shows the observed and expected value along with the bias and the hypothesis test p-value for each level. The hypothesis tests for level 1 and 2 are not significant. But for level 3, the bias is significantly different from zero and is highlighted in red. You should therefore determine if the bias is acceptable for your laboratory's needs by comparing it to user-specified allowable bias 
or contact the manufacturer for further assistance in diagnosing the problem. If the hypothesis test is not statistically significant, but the bias estimate is much larger than zero, you may want to repeat the study with more data to be able to detect smaller departures from zero. So, thank you for watching this tutorial. If you want to find out more and download a free trial of Analyze It, visit us at analyze-it.com.